here's my ASMR of a MacBook Pro starting up. <laughs> I like the loud hard. It was drowned out by the hard drive noise. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we are going uh, Kadabra, Jinx, Sandslash. Feels like it's good for this team. What a geek during the last episode was just uh, preparing some more Pokemon for us. Uh, was it, what uh, Pokemon were you preparing for us in the uh, It was file? just the same team, but I was leveling them all up to 100. Okay, so you've got a bunch at 100? Yeah, so whenever we do round two for, uh, for this cup, then we can just bring the same team in. This time, all yeah. six. It'll feel good to have all six of them in with the customized movesets to level 100. That'll be good. All right. I'm feeling pretty good about the chance of a continue on this battle. Okay, that won't Ooh. be bad. I thought he was going to go with electric move, but that, yeah. You know, as a kid, I always thought takedown was a really strong move, but after looking it up recently, because I never really used takedown, uh, I looked it up recently. Takedown? Kind of underwhelming. Uh, it misses a lot. It's not that strong. It does recoil damage. It's just worse than Double Edge in every way. Hmm. Yeah, Double Edge is actually really strong if you put it on the right Pokemon. Like a Tauros with Double Edge would be really strong. I'd still rather just use Return, though, if it's past Gen 1, because Return has no recoil and it's really strong. It's incredibly strong. Yeah. It's, uh, I always forget if it's 102 damage, or, sorry, 102 power, or 108 power at max friendship. It's one of the two. It's a strange number, yeah. but it's really high. You know, you add stab to that, you can get a really strong move. Put that on a physically strong normal Pokemon, which Taurus is, like, the only thing that comes to mind right away. Yeah. And it would just demolish people. Okay, uh, Jinx. Because ice is good against ground, right? I'm like 99% sure of that. I yep. never use uh, ice on ground because I usually have water or grass for that. But, you know. You normally have a better choice than fucking ice. Now, he could be using a rock move. That would hurt Jinx. Or he could be using focus energy. Getting pumped. Look, it's even doing curls. Did we? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great, actually. Did we ever figure out, by the way... If in Gen 1, on Pokemon Stadium specifically, okay. Did we ever find out if they fixed Focus Energy in Stadium? They must have, right? What a weird uh, switch. I'm not sure. We'll just, we'll Ice Punch it here and then we'll take it out with Psychic. Wow! That's a bit more than I thought. Yeah, Ice Punch is a wicked move on Jinx. Yeah. Jinx is very good in Gen 1. I think it's totally underrated. Um, me and Mystic Umbreon were talking ugly. about this once. It is ugly, yes. It's a weird-looking Pokemon. However, I like <laughs> Jinx. It's Ice, it's Psychic. Those are pretty cool types, not a pun. And it's got cool moves. It's got Lovely Kiss, which is a unique move. That's always fun. It's fast, it hits hard. It's just a fun Pokemon. I like Jinx. I actually really like Ice-type Pokemon. Like, I like the yeah. typing. There just aren't a lot of great... Looking ice type Pokemon. Also, I find ice types tend to be fragile. It's a it's a bad type defensively. Yeah. Like uh, you know what one I really really like that's like very Gen two to me is Pillow Swine. I like that Pokemon a lot, but it's ground and ice, and it's kind of easy to take out. Yeah. No strong yeah. opinions on Pillow Swine. No. I don't know. Something about that Pokemon I really like. I like, fuck, even trying to think of the Ice-type Pokemon, there aren't a lot that come to mind that I really like the design of. My favorite is Cryogonal. I have medium okay. low opinions of Cryogonal. At first, it always looked boring and lame to me, but then people pointed out like, oh, but if you look at it this way, it looks like it's pulling a face with its eyes and stuff. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. that gives it a little more personality, but I'm still not quite feeling it. I feel like Cryogonal is the kind of thing I'd like if it was in Pokemon Stadium and I could really see its personality shine, you know? Mm -hmm. I think I need to see uh, it in the in right Pokedex set. Entry, its Pokedex entry implies that it hunts for prey using that little mustache of uh, ice and vapor that okay. it has. So it is actually a hunter. It just eats it 
things, and it's a snowflake. Huh. Like, that's hardcore. Yeah, that's kind of cool, actually. Maybe I maybe I need to reassess my opinions on it. And uh, according to Sanchez Delibird... <laughs> uh, Wait, yeah, Joltia. hold on! Oh, shit. Stop the presses! Okay. Santa's Deli Bird! I said the name. I said the name. Oh, boy. You said the hold name. On. You Let have me go to get explain my it. Real quick. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Well, he's doing that. Uh, Jolteon, I'm liking... We don't have anything for fire types. Oh, no, we have Sand Slash for fire Yeah, types. we have Sand Slash for that. Um, um, yeah, I'll take Sand Slash. And then Victory Bell, Kadabra... Uh, All right, so here's my ASMR of a MacBook Pro starting up. <laughs> I like the loud hard... It was drowned out by the hard drive noise. It really was. Um, <laughs> yeah, my, my favorite... <laughs> my favorite ice types Pokemon are uh, fucking like Dugong, uh, Alolan, mm. Sandshrew, and Sandslash, because... Oh, those are good. Of course. Uh, I I do like those. Whoa, Kingler! I really like Kingler as a Pokemon. Like, why is he so big? Like, I know Crab Hammer <laughs> wasn't good until Gen Four when they made it physical, but I just the animation, how you like Crab walks back into position. I love Kingler. Yeah. <laughs> Kingler's hilarious. Uh, Snom, because every, everybody of likes Snom, and Fro horrible. Frostmoth. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yes, yes. Are we past three? We're past three minutes. What the fuck is a snob? You don't know a snob? I I have shield, missed remember? something. What? What Ugh. is snob? Okay, so think snob is amazing. Think Vesta, the fire bug Pokemon from Gen Five. Uh, make it ice type. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, oh, funny thing I found out recently. Um. So this is another thing about how badly programmed Gen 1 is. So we might need to look up and see if it works like this in Gen... Uh, in Pokemon Stadium or not, because it's a general Gen 1 thing. Um, what was it? So the way they wrote the code... You know how a, a, an electric Pokemon can't get paralyzed? A fire Pokemon can't get burned? Poison Pokemon can't get poisoned? Stuff like that, right? But the way that they wrote the code... To save space, they just wrote code that says, okay, you can't get a status affliction by your own type. A side effect of that is Body Slam can't paralyze a normal type. Oh shit, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea until I read a comment on a J-Rose video. And I read that, I'm like, there's no fucking way. And I looked it up and it's true. How weird is that? Like, that's, that's like, a, weird. how much of a Crusader Kings 2 thing is that? Of, like, there's one guy on Earth who has this tidbit of information that is vitally important to everybody, and you may just never know it, because it's so easy to miss. Oh, okay, okay, so I, I have my collection of Santa's Deli Bird screenshots ready okay. to go here. So a, a little bit of preface for me first is, this is a story we've told many, many times on the show, but I don't think we have ever told it since I blew up on Pokemon stuff. So, for judging by the average views right now, on the week this comes out, there's gonna be a solid 30,000 people watching this who have never heard the Santa's Deli Bird story. And it's wonderful. So, what a geek, walk us through it. Okay, I might, I don't wanna risk d dipping out because of internet issues. I don't know mm -hmm. if that will happen. So uh, just give a brief description of Santa's Deli Bird, like what he did. Okay, so back in the day, I used to do um, creepypasta readings, video game creepypasta readings on Sundays as like a little sideshow with the Let's Plays, you know, kind of like what I do right now with the, the, the Pokemon challenges, where the challenges are like a sideshow on the side and the bulk of my channel is Let's Plays, just what I love doing the most. And a lot of those creepypasta readings were Pokemon ones, because it's what people would mostly write in for the show. It was fan-made uh, creepypastas. And so we had a whole forum, and we had a bunch of moderators, and people would write stories, and people would proofread each other's stories. It was pretty cool. It was very rudimentary, but it was pretty cool. Uh, Sandus Delibird was a guy who was on the forum, and it was always kind of really weird. Like, no one... I think some people got along with him. No one hated him or anything, but he was very dramatic. Is that a good way hmm. to put him? Yep. 
Yep, that's a very good way of uh, putting it. He liked to put himself in the position of Pokemon protagonists. Yeah, and he really... He seemed like he really wanted to be a big deal on the forum, if that made sense. And it's... I don't know. It always felt like there's this degree of separation between him and the rest of the server. Like, there's... Like, when, when Santa Stelly Bird makes a post on the, on the thread... You're you're kind of getting a little bit excited, but also a little worried it's all gonna derail because it's like he's weird. So go ahead and tell your Santa Stelly Bird story because you've got the best one. Yeah. Um. So. Oh, crit right on thunder. So right when uh, Pokemon X and Y were starting to get popular, he was challenging people, or not really starting to get popular, but they had just come out. He was getting into it just as much as most Pokemon fans were. Uh, he was challenging people on the forum. So, um, for a while, he was just randomly challenging people for, for him, battling them. He started making a dramatic, Hey, for this event, I am now going to hold a tournament where I fight everybody. Um, so, I have this screenshot from the forum post he made called The Ultimate Showdown Ellipsis. And I'm going to read off verbatim, assuming I don't cut out, hopefully, um, <laughs> what he what he said in each of these posts. Oh, it's incredible. Uh, okay. I challenge anyone who has the guts to face me in Pokemon X and Y. If you are brave enough to face 13 rounds of my Pokemon, <laughs> and looks like you have came to the right person, I'll what test you with all of my strategies. This is for those who have high skill and might of Pokemon. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> someone else on the forum at the time says, I accept your challenge in a couple of days. So close to level 100. He responds, I won't be ready yet until I get all of my Pokemon to level 100. Lucky for you, it took me less than a month to get them all to level 65 plus. <laughs> Lucky for you. See, that's the thing, is like there's these all these little things where it, it's pushing it of like, it's going from dude is confident to, all right, this guy's a little full of himself. Well, I like that. Uh, it's, I like that. It's lucky for you. It only took me a month to get yeah. my Pokemon to level sixty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah. so lucky for us. It's gonna take me a few more months to get to level one hundred. <laughs> I'm really good, but it's it's gonna take a while. Hold on. <laughs> uh, it's also worth pointing out that he says uh, he, he had he in, implies that he has a team ready to go, but then he says I won't be ready yet. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, flex and victory bell. In between the um, the post where he tried challenging people, he also made random, hey, observation about random Pokemon uh, topics. So here's one. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Was that thunder? It's thunder. It's thundering outside. Wow. Uh, Dramatic. What do you think is the cutest <laughs> Pokemon ever? I think the cutest Pokemon ever is Chingling. I mean, it's a baby Pokemon that's also a bell. That's the cutest concept ever, not to mention the mix of pink and yellow. I swear, every time I hold my Chingling plush and hug it, I just have tears coming down my eyes, as if it's a baby daughter of mine. This is why I think Pokemon are family as well. Anyway, <laughs> what Pokemon do you think is the cutest of all time? You see, like, it started off just like a wholesome topic about, oh, what's the cutest Pokemon? And then it got weird really fast. <laughs> Here's another I one. I personally think Chingling is the cutest because it's basically my own daughter. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> Oh, God, don't I put it like that. I wouldn't deposit my daughter into the PC and throw her out. That's just not my style. <laughs> okay, wait, his entire team but one is weak against Jolteon, so I think I know what my opening is. Well, no, four of them is weak. Whatever. Anyway. Um, wait, which, so, what am I missing? What am I missing? There's five Beedrill flying types. Beedrill and Hawker types. are not weak to Jolteon. Beedrill? Yeah, Beedrill's bug poison. Why do I keep thinking it's part flying? What's wrong with me? Lots of things, but that's besides the point. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, Jinx is a good pick then. I'll, I'll, because Jinx yeah. has got Ice and uh, Psychic. So, Kadabra, Jinx, Jolteon. Jolteon yeah. first, though. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Gyarados. Oh, it feels so nice fighting a, that I might fight a Gyarados and it won't have Intimidate. I'm so used to just that awfulness of Intimidate. Um, uh, should I even here switch? are a couple of other topics. 
Yes, oh, please sorry. continue. What's your question? Uh, you know, I, I will switch for Cadaver because I do probably need Jolteon for other things. So, yeah, yeah. Con continue with Santa's deli bird posts. Please continue. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, he makes a forum post called, Has Anybody Heard? It was my understanding here that everybody has heard. Have you heard? Five minutes later, after no one responds. Oh, well, a bird, bird, bird. The bird is the word. You get the joke. Um, he makes another forum post. Don't use Dragon Dance when battling me. If you do use Dragon Dance while battling me, I'll be yelling, No Forbidden Dragon Dancing! I always called it the Forbidden Dragon Dance, since I just wanted it to be funny. Wait, he made a he made a thread for that? <clears throat> yeah. He didn't just say that in his thread about challenges. He made a thread for that. Yep. All right. See, that's that's Santa's Deli Bird. See, this is what this is why we felt the need to tell everybody about this guy. Is like, <laughs> it's one in a million. This guy. I, I don't know how else to describe it. I'm just for Jolteon. So, I like how he's just to not use it too. Like it's like a move he knows he's not good at, like against. Yeah. 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 Don't use that because I'll be fucked. Yeah. Don't use that because I'm going to get angry. And you wouldn't I, want me to get angry. I'm the greatest Pokemon champion, but don't use the move I'm bad against. My team sucks against that one. Otherwise, I'm going to yell at you. Yeah. So this is... This next thread was the start of him having this weird obsession with me and trying to beat me. Um, called Pokemon Trainer Red Team Complete. I finally got Red's team from Heart Gold Soul Silver complete. I now hold Venusaur, Charizard, Blastoise, Lapras, Snorlax, and Pikachu. Who wishes to battle me? We shall battle on Christmas Eve. We shall battle on Christmas Eve. No ifs, ands, or buts. Yep, you are. You have no choice in the matter. You are going to battle me. Someone had asked them, what happened to you? He goes, I'm the new Pokemon Trainer Red now. Worth noting that he doesn't add any vowels to Pokemon. It's just PKMN. That's you just weird. Wait I That's you. weird. You just wait when I face you with my improved Pokemon Trainer Red team. Again, without the vowels. And improved still has Pikachu. Yep. <laughs> so Fiber Knife, one of the longstanding fans of uh, the forum and the dry. Yeah. Wow, I haven't to thought about that name in a while. That's weird. Yeah, wow. Chas the Viber Knife. Yeah, uh, I, I hope they're still around and doing well. I feel like I haven't heard from them in forever. So he says you're far too talkative to be red. Why else would I be the new red? This new one can now talk, and he studies on what to use. Three rounds against this new one. <laughs> with different mega evolution. First will be Mega Charizard Y. Second will be Mega Blastoise. And last round will be Mega Venusaur. Well, thanks for letting me know in advance so yeah. I can be ready. Yeah, you're just being nice to people. Yeah, awful polite. I am the new and improved Red. I tell you my strategies in advance. And he learns from his mistakes. <laughs> Not mm, as in learning from mistakes, because he... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Al although it, it would apply to that, because he definitely doesn't, but... Um, uh, Char I like Charizard do as the opener. Here. I like Jinx. Victory I, Bell I, Candle I, Star, I guess. Uh, sorry, run that by me again. Victory, Victory Bell? Bell or Jolteon and the U Star. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like this. And so we're we're opening with Charizard because he's good against the highest number, even if it's only two. But he's good in general. Jinx because Ice is also good against them, and Psychic is just good. And um, Victory Bell for star you or just kind of anything I... we have, look we have five continues okay fair um so he makes another forum post in regards to the previous one he says who will be my chosen three i shall choose three players from this forum to battle my pokemon trainer red team each one will face one of my mega pokemon who will be facing which one i decide all right so i just i decide to toy with him a little bit i go false brandon decides <laughs> uh, so he responds uh, young cricket I am the decider here you are just a young cricket who shall wait to see if you might be one of the three man he really liked that young cricket line he really did I play with him some more 
Roll a d20. If you roll a 1, 2, or 3, pick that guy. If it's 4 through 20, roll again. Nice. If it lands on 21, you're doing something wrong. If you land on a 10, roll a 6-sided <laughs> die and choose hearts or diamonds. If you end up rolling the d20, in addition to rolling a 6-sided die and choosing hearts or diamonds, this medicine will not cure Amphi. I'm Batman. <laughs> I think you showed me that post back in the day. I remember that one. God, the forum. That brings back memories. You know I don't have access to that forum anymore? Someone messaged me a while I back. I believe it. Someone messaged me a while back saying that they wanted to, um, they, they are asking, like, they said, like, hey, I, I'm having troubles logging in. Could you delete these old posts I made? Like, it had my Twitter in it, and I don't want it there. I'm like, yeah, sure, man. So I go in there, and I'm not allowed to log into the admin account. It turns out that, uh, when they switched over, so Freeform, it used to be a, on a form called Freeforms, or a service called Freeforms, that got bought out by another company, and they botched the transfer so bad, they deleted my admin account. And so... Uh, no one is the admin of that forum. Nobody is the admin of the forum. <laughs> it just oh. turns into Lord of the Flies. Yeah, so I bet you it still gets posts occasionally. Uh, do I, do I have any reason to switch? Uh, just fly. It's weak. It's got weak physical defense. Yeah, it's got tons of, uh, special, though. Actually, Chansey's scary in Gen 1 because it still has lots of special. Yeah, that's why I was going to suggest using Stand Slash because of the yeah. physical uh, attack. We have had some comments telling us that Chansey's not that bad. Uh, that looks mm -hmm. like a hit to me, but okay. Now we know it's got a bubble beam. We might not have a continue for once. You so to continue, the beam, you're okay. yeah. to continue the Santa's Daily Bird story, after that random post I, I made about him, uh, he says, "Fine then. Looks like you'll be one of the you'll be the first of the three then with an attitude like that. We'll be ready to lose." <laughs> Uh, he makes a new forum post on on uh, Christmas Eve. I almost called it the December Ween Eve because of Homestar Runner. <laughs> um, called Big Announcement from Santa's Deli Bird. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first annual Santa's Deli Bird Christmas Eve battle. Worth noting that he never did this another time. Yeah. I'm your battler, <laughs> Santa's Deli Bird. And this year, we shall have three lucky competitors for this Christmas battle facing my Pokemon Trainer Red team. And the chosen three have been decided. First up will be Viber Knife. Second will be Legion 7531. And finally, oh. the last competitor who will face me in this is Aislinn Summers. Man, I haven't heard some of these names in ages. Wait, he said you were going to be one of them and then didn't name you as one of them. Yeah. Uh, so he battles uh, Aislinn and then edits this post to say, hey, I win. Good, good battles. GG's. Mm -hmm. And I quote him and say, well, I feel left out. Well, you never battled me, but never asked for a battle. Fiberknife's taking your place, since you wanted to battle me. Fibro was already on the list for being your opponent, as was Aislin. Legion wasn't before. Still, maybe Fiberknife wants, wants you to battle instead. But the decision is up to the both of you. And then in brackets, Psst, what a geek. You're going to be this special bonus battle since you are a moderator on this forum. <laughs> oh. Like it's a storyline. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I say, I feel like Vibra will battle, but without any expectation that he'll win. Well, that's why, as a surprise, I made you the special coup, coup the grace of this Christmas Eve special. But I didn't <laughs> want to spoil the surprise. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. So I battled him and win. I had a team that was like Greninja, Kangaskhan, Triagonal, Hitmonchan. Oh, uh, motherfucker! God damn it, soft boil. Second goddamn. Sorry, sorry. This fight's no, really good. annoying. You're good. So after I beat him, I was like the only person to beat him that day. He uh, made a post the next day on Christmas uh, called What a Geek's Hitmonchan. He falcon punched my Venusaur with one hit of, a, of an ice punch. He might as well name his Hitmonchan Falcon Punch. Wouldn't a falcon punch be a fire punch, not an ice punch? You would think, right? Or, or. Focus punch. Or focus, exactly, yeah. Something other or, than ice punch. Or just, just not ice punch. punch. Yeah, not ice punch. <laughs> yeah, just not ice punch. Uh, and four days later, he put, makes another forum post. A genderless Pokemon with a tract? Um, how many is that? That is three in Terabangs. A genderless Pokemon with a tract? Oh. <laughs> I, I will remind everybody, what year was this? The 2013. Yeah, 2013, so don't read any kind of political undertone into that. There wasn't any. Yeah, no. 
Yeah. What is Game Freak's problem? Out of all the genderless Pokemon, only one knows a tract, meaning it will fail every single time. They decided to have Cryogonal know it. I can't believe they do that. So the the meaning to this post is that he's looking up, like he's researching how to beat my team. So he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he's heard you, you've got one. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's there's studying. there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that's clearly why the post was made. That's the subtext of it, you know. Mm -hmm. What now? Uh, new post, New Year's Eve battle. I decided that this New Year's Eve, I will challenge Wood Geek to a rematch. This time with my better Pokemon team. I hope he does his best. And then the next day, actually, I changed my mind. I'll just battle what he gave to a rematch on Pokemon Y. This will be only one of many ultimate tests he will be taking. And then oh. on New Year's Eve, he says, this is it. What geek better get your team ready. And then I did. And he never battled me. He never even showed up. Oh. Wow. So flash forward to, uh, what is it, May? Yeah, May of the next Holy year. Fuck. <laughs> uh, he, he, after that post... He didn't respond, like, on the forum at all for a few months. Um, like, he just stopped making posts. All right. And then in May... He went uh, into the mountains to train. He did, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. He did. Real quick. 25 minutes in, but we're at the finals. We we're going to go for the finals. Real quick, let's just pick our team. Sure. Uh, uh, oh. good against Cloyster and Moltres. Uh, I like Jinx because of Ice. Yeah. Yeah, Jinx would be good against uh, Rystor. <laughs> <laughs> Rystor and Nairstor. <laughs> what the fuck are these names? Oh, and Moltres. And, okay, so Jolteon. Sand slash. Jinx, Sandslash. Do we want to open with Jolteon or Jinx? Uh, mm. Jolteon's fast, so. <clears throat> I will remind you, we have five continues. We've got some, we've got some room to toy with this fight. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Jinx seems to be good against the most things here. Yeah, I'm gonna go Jinx, Jolteon, Sandslash. We'll just roll with it. All right, let's let's see if we can uh, tell the entirety of the Santa's Deli Bird stories in this episode. Then. All right, we're nearing the end. Oh, um, perfect start. So, he, in May, I was just playing X online one day. He shows up online in X and just challenges me to a battle randomly, not even like announcing it or anything. Um, okay. So. He battles me, I win again. D slightly different team on my part, and definitely a different team on his part. If you actually want to see the battles go down, I have uploaded a video called The Tale of Santa's Deli Bird, and the matches were recorded for that, like the replays of the matches. Uh, do you think I should use Psychic to just overpower him, or should we... Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I was going to say, we could switch for Jolteon, but I don't know what kind of damage he's going to do. Probably not a ton, but... Cloyster is pretty weak and special in Gen 1, if I remember right. It really oh, is. easy, it, it, easy. It's bad in general. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, long story short, if you want to see the battles play out for Santa's Deli Bird, search up the tale of Santa's Deli Bird. All one word, no punctuation, mm -hmm. on YouTube. <laughs> After the battle, he sends me a private message from the forum, uh, just called Congratulations. You have done well defeating me, but that was only a test to see if you're ready to battle all 240 someday. Consider me your new rival in this game. And at the time, I had completed the national text, so I said, yeah, have fun against all 718 of mine. <laughs> oh, a smartass, I see. You know how I feel about smartasses. They kind of get a little on my nerve. Okay, see, the problem there is he's been taking jabs at you for like a year and a half. You finally take one back, and all of a sudden, you're the smartass. Yep, yeah. Okay, um, Sand Slash. I respond, and you know how I feel about overachievers and sore losers. Looks like we're both mad at each other for one reason or another. <laughs> Actually, I just wanted to try to be as good as you. All I ever wanted was to become the best I can. But you just got lucky for now, since I didn't use a Mega Evolution. Next time we battle, I promise oh. I'll win. Well, no wonder. Yeah. There's that sore loser attitude again. Dude, yep. I never wanted to be better than anyone else. I get a thrill out of battling, and regardless of whether I win or lose, I enjoy myself and I learn from my mistakes. I don't treat it as a competition of who's better than whom. You can battle me all you want, but just know I was never trying to be better than anyone. And to clarify, that's what you said, right? That's what I said, yes. Yeah. And his last response before I just stopped talking to him. <laughs> the legendary post! Here we go. 
I battle for fun too, actually. But against you, it's a different story. Heck, I know everyone wins and loses it sometimes. I even accept my losses without giving up. I show true pride as a guardian. My goal, to do my best, to fulfill my hopes and dreams. And that was your lock screen for years. It was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying my not to lose it. I show my true pride as a guardian. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. And what that's why in our Dokapon Kingdom playthrough, I named myself True Guardian. Yeah. Uh, oh, Dokapon Kingdom. Sakes. I can't wait to get back to that stream. That's a fun one. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to go put my laptop away now. By the way, everybody oh. watching this, uh, we, we brought up X and Y, and that just reminded me. Um, X and Y, that's actually the only generation that uh, I've never played at all. Uh, do you guys want to see me do, like, a Let's Play on that sometime soon? Because I wouldn't mind Let's Playing that like we did Platinum. I think it'd be fun. And, uh, Brandon, you were saying you like X and Y, right? I do. That was my reintroduction to Pokemon. When did you stop? I stopped after Ruby and Sapphire. Okay. So I played I played a bit of Leaf Green and Fire Red, but like mm -hmm. at that point, that's like when I left and I yeah. came back at X and Y. That's kind of how I uh, see. I I kind of left early at I I never got platinum because at the time I just didn't have the money. And when when Gen Five was about to come out, I'm like, okay, I'll pick up platinum because I had the money then, and then I'll play that a bunch, and then I'll buy uh, black or white when it comes out. I ended up getting white. My sister bought black. Uh, yeah, she got she bought black. I block. I bought white. These are hard words to say in succession when you're illiterate, <laughs> apparently. Um, or when you're stupid. Uh, yeah, exactly. So in platinum, I only got like two gyms in, or maybe only one. I don't even know if I beat the first gym in platinum. But then like white came out. I played white a bunch. I got to the elite four, and then I just stopped. Uh, and so, <laughs> funnily enough, the first time I've ever beaten Gen 5 was the Badoof run. The, the Badoof challenge was the first nice. time I ever beat Gen 5. Uh, and then nice. Gen 6, I have never played because I got a 3DS very late because I was dirt poor. And 7, I only played a little bit after I started blowing up. And then 8, I've still only played like three gyms. I, I like it. I just don't have time. Hey man, the newest one the newest one I hadn't beaten until I did my challenge on. <laughs> yeah, I um it's not that I'm like bored of any of the newer Pokemon games necessarily. Okay, well Gen 7 I didn't have very much fun with. I'll maybe yeah, I'll let's play it one day. That one I found really frustrating, but um it, I it'd be I, better if we platinum that one. Yeah, I, I like platinum. Uh I generally like Gen 5 casually. I think Gen 5 casually is really fun, which is why I did the randomizer on What a Geek's channel about it. And uh, Gen 8, I've really enjoyed what I've played. So I'll probably like Gen 6, I assume. As long as it's not like Gen 7. Something about Gen 7 just wasn't working no, it's for not. me. No, it's yeah, not. Like it, Gen 7. It's not. There's nothing like Gen 7. I felt like it took me an hour to do anything. Like every hour, I got to have a couple battles and do something. And every route felt inconsequential. And every character mildly annoyed me. I just... Ugh, I couldn't and get it, into that and one. And it sucks because some of the Alolan Pokemon are really cool. Yeah, but, Alolan hmm. Pokemon is such a cool concept. Like, Alolan Sand Slash is so cool. Yep. Anyway. But, uh, pun on, intended, haha. On the next episode, everybody, uh, are we just going on to, to Prime Cup Ultra Ball, I guess? I mean, yeah. we we did that one pretty handily. I, I don't think we need a rental team quite yet. All right, next episode, everybody, Ultra Ball Cup. Until next time, have a nice day. See ya. I show true pride as a guardian. <laughs>